Welcome to the United States Paranormal Podcast. Sit down and buckle up for an enlightening ride through everything cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. Hello all my paranormal freaks out there. It is I, Golden J, and welcome to the United States of Paranormal Podcast. That's right, where we talk about anything spooky, creepy, and cryptid. It's just a good time. You know what I'm saying? I do. Alicia is not with me today because she has uh, fallen ill and... And we hope for a speedy recovery. So I brought in an expert in everything paranormal. That's right. The rocker chick herself is here. Say hello, Bobby. Hi. <laughs> I don't think I'm an expert. I just watch a lot of paranormal. You stuff. watch more <laughs> paranormal stuff than anybody i know except oh. maybe logan and logan watches more <laughs> paranormal shit than anybody i know by the way logan thank you for uh, discovery plus <laughs> <laughs> in case yeah in case logan in case i haven't told you she is tearing up your discovery plus every night as a matter of fact we just ran out of um internet do we uh, <laughs> that has nothing to do with me watching Discovery Plus. That has uh, all to do with this. <laughs> it all has to do with the podcast, our Zoom meetings, and yeah. What? Uh, blame me. That's just it. We all know that you just can't stop watching. I don't know what do you watch on there. Oh, I watch. Um, I've watched some episodes, old episodes of Ghost Hunters, and um, that's where we learned about this place. The Willow's Weep was the William Shatner, um, the Unexplained. Yep. Um, I can't remember the name of the one I'm watching right now. With the it's got you. You're watching the one with Dave Schrader. Yes. Uh, um, Haunting in the Heartland. Is that right? You sure it's Dave Schrader? I thought it was Steve something. Oh, Steve Slippley. <laughs> Slip Slippley. I think is yeah. That's uh, uh, the Dave Schrader one. Was Ghosts of some. <laughs> There's like three different ghosts. There's Ghost of Shepherdstown and Ghost of yeah, there's a bunch of them. There is a lot of them. Yeah, and you've watched... Uh, I mean, have you gone through all the paranormal stuff on there yet? I mean, you've got to be close. I am close, um, but there's a couple of them that I just don't like. Like, I am not a oh, big oh, Zach Baggins oh, fan. Oh. I just... I feel if you're going to go into a haunted house, you might want to be a little quieter. You might want to actually let people hear what's going on around you instead of being as loud as he is. Right. And yeah, I just, I get very annoyed with him, so I don't really like watching it. I uh, I tried to watch something of his the other day. I thought, well, I'll have a more open mind, and I think I got 15 minutes in before I shut it off. I'm like, nope, not doing it. And. I don't know. You know, maybe he catches some stuff that uh, is great. I have no idea, but it just wasn't my it wasn't my cup of tea, so I don't watch it. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's some. There's a couple of good. I really like the the one I've been watching, the Heartland. Um, with, with yeah, with with. Steve, I think yeah. he does a really good job, and he helps the people at the end. So, you know, the other ones just kind of come in and. Yeah, you have a ghost and leave. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> which which is what, you know, if, if in our last episode where we had the inter interview with Jennifer, that's what the people she brought in told her. Well, you know, yep, you're haunted, so you just have to learn to live with it. There's no, I mean, come on. Yeah, There's I mean, if you're going to go in and investigate something, you need to know how to help at least try to... Oh, 100%. Get rid of it. Yeah. 100%. At least that's the way I felt. I mean, I've never had to deal with any of that kind of stuff. So. Well, I really hope we never have to deal with any no. of that stuff. But I don't uh, think I'm as open minded as most people that I would even notice if something was going on around me like that. So you don't think you would notice if there was a doll that moved or. Probably not. I would be just like uh, Jen was when she said that she would just play it off as. It was the wind or, you know, something right. like that. I don't think I would ever think, oh, I'm haunted or whatever. Right, so. right. Yeah, or as Jen was, as Jen put it, you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
By the way, uh, I, I I love going back and listening to the episodes with you, um, especially you know uh, like the the Team Chaos episodes. Listening to them with you and watching your reaction to some of the the crazy things that they say or do and. And, you know, just to see you just start laughing. Oh, yeah, I enjoy. I enjoy them so much because they just interact so well together. They do. They They play off of each other. And, yeah. But, yeah, we were, uh, we were yesterday, we're out and about. And I'm like, what do you want to listen to? And she's like, I want to listen to the Jennifer interview. I haven't heard it yet. So, um, yeah, we, I got to watch her taking that interview. And, and there was just certain things that Jennifer said, and she just started chuckling. It was it was awesome. <laughs> I really, t- <laughs> I was, I was, I was very annoyed with you and interrupting her story. I, I it's like Jeremy, I, shut up and let her talk. I, uh, I was going to tell Jen that today when I saw her. I was like, yeah, Bobby told me I just need to shut the hell up when I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Poor girl kept getting lost in her story. It's like, God, Jeremy. Well, uh, you know, I had questions. Uh, yeah, and and it happens, and I I almost felt like she might have been getting a little not upset, but just you know, you were bringing up the show and right. how the show had really nothing, right? Very few actual happenings, so it was just like you know, this is actually coming from the person that it's true, and I and and I wanted her to tell her story, but I needed a reference point from. Yeah. And that was, and I did mention that in in the interview that that I keep going back to that because that was my reference point, right, to the story and how it all kind of unfolded. But no, I thought she did a great job, and and yeah, m- minus me interrupting her. Thank you for pointing that out. And now all our listeners know that I'm a big buffoon. But... No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I did the things that I always complain about other people doing. It's like, just shut up and let him tell the story. <laughs> it's like, damn it. Uh, you know, I wanted her to be comfortable and wanted to be able to get the story out. And I didn't need to lead her anywhere. She was doing just fine on her own. So Yeah, she did. She did a great job. And you guys did a great job. Like I said, it was just one of those things listening to it. I'm just like, just shut your mouth, Grandpa. And I could, yeah, I could tell that she's like, well, let me get back to the, you know, I'm, I'm getting to that. Just, you know, it's true. <laughs> Which it's I thought true. she was, she's, you could definitely tell she was your boss. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Cause she was like, Jeremy, uh, I'm yeah. getting to it. I'm getting there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now that we've recapped, uh, you know, team Boozer's last episode, um, and all of your paranormal life. now uh, let's hit something real quick before we get into get into today's story you like to go and kind of explore some of these i mean you haven't done it in a long time but oh gosh when we were when we were teenagers i'd drag you out to little egypt and places like that yes i wanted i want to be scared. I don't want to be scared as far as somebody pulling out in front of you and you think you're going to die scared, but I want that. I want, I think I want to see something you want to paranormal. You, you want to like what Jen said, you want to experience an apparition. You want to see something. Or... Yeah. Or I want to see something go flying across the room, you know? Uh, yeah. I don't want something physically to, to scare me, I want to visually be scared, I guess. You know, it's just like you're watching a, a movie and you jump or whatever. That kind of scare. Okay, see, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't like watching those movies and getting scared and getting that anxiety feeling. Like, well, yeah, oh. and I think it's crazy that you are a part of this because, yeah, I mean, I, I watched every single episode of Supernatural and Jeremy not watch any of them you know it is just oh so... no i've not i've never not watched any of well, them well the scooby-doo one <laughs> scooby-doo one was really good but i loved it that uh which one uh, dean was like all up on oh, all yeah. up on velma that was the best part of the whole no show. it was daphne daphne sorry i did i did go wrong there people sorry <laughs> i meant i meant daphne um, but I've watched several episodes of that, and I've watched certain movies with you. And very little, very little. I used I have to 
have the kids take me to go see a scary movie if I want to see it or watch it by myself, which... I watched Silent Hill. I took you to the movies to see Silent Hill and was miserable for the first 15 minutes waiting for the movie to come on, being like, I didn't have my blanket to hide my face was, like Colton does. That was more of a... I mean, it was scary, but it wasn't... It was more... I don't even know. It's been a long time since we've seen It has been that. a long time, yeah. But that's the last one I've actually taken you to, to the movie theater to see. True. Your kids love that. So, I mean, it's bonding time. So, I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. Montana. And I, what, Skylar took me to see it. Uh, Gunner, he kind of watches them every once in a while. Right. Not, not a ton. No. Nope. Well, are you ready to get into our uh, adventure, our story of the day here? I sure am. And I'm happy to have you with me because you did watch the documentary on uh, Scare Network TV with me. Uh, we actually had to rent it because, you know, information on this place is really thin. I mean, I had to do a lot of digging. I've done a lot of research. And I want to tell my listeners now that my timelines are just a little wonky in all of this. So, uh I just, yeah, it, it, or the early stuff, you know, back in the late 1800s is just a little bit. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, I don't think they document it as well as they do nowadays for anything, you know, so um, getting things exactly right that happened over a hundred years year, yeah ago. over a hundred years ago but i'm happy that you're here doing we doing this with me because you know you did watch it and we have kind of done a little more research well and, and i brought things. this to your attention because i you watched did. the william shatner thing and i'm like jeremy come look at this house right it just freaked me out it well was like, and you know what drew what? me into it is the fact that it's in indiana yeah and that's what makes it even more exciting that's I think that's why I really liked Waverly Hill so much, because it was so close. Right. So today, we are going to be talking about the Willow's Weep House. And like I said, the, the, time, the time thing is a little askew. So I'm going to do the best I can to tell you this story and to hopefully just, you know... I'll correct him as he goes along. Yeah, you know she will. <laughs> Uh, my sources are Scare TV Network, uh, the Brown Brothers Haunting Hour podcast, and of course, of course, the History Channel's The Unexplained with William Shatner, which is where we where all this started. So, all right, you ready to get going? Sure. All right. Well, Willow's Weep is actually known as the most evil house in North America. Now, obviously. I think the unexplained kind of gave it that name, but a, a lot of a lot of the research I did, they kind of went in that direction. But I've also done other research where there's like, hey, this house is the most haunted house in North in North America or or in America. So maybe that's the difference. In a whole, that house in America is the haunted, but this one in North America. Let's so, just say it's the most haunted house in Indiana. Is what ooh, I mean, that makes it even closer. Yeah. Well, it could become the most haunted house in the world in the world you never know um we are going to take a road trip down to cayuga indiana which is just kind of north of Terre Haute, maybe half an hour or so like that it's a little town just a small little town um the house is actually known as willow's weep because of the giant willow tree that is in the front yard. So it is at uh, 5173 <laughs> North Elm Road. Okay. And the house itself was built in 1890. We're going to talk a, more, a little bit more about that. I just wanted to give you a brief over, overscale of the house itself. What the big draw of this house is, is that it is built in the shape of an upside down cross. Now, when I say that, it doesn't, my brain can't wrap around that because if I look at it from this way, it's upside down. But if I go to the other side of the house and to look at it, it's, I mean, it's, it's right side up. Does that make sense to you? No, I mean, it, 
you know, depending on which end of the house you're looking at is whether it's an upside down cross or it is a right side up cross. So um, what what it here is a specific thing. Um, it says from the front, the cute clapboard building seems like a great place to live. But from above, it's evident that Willow's Weep is cross shaped and mm-hmm. faces east. If it wasn't clear by the by that alone, the entrance entrance is located at the base making the house an introverted cross the what what is what is the last thing you said the entrance is located at the base so making it an introverted cross okay so it's upside down so the the fact that the front of the house the front door of the house is facing east there's a specific reason for that do you know what that reason is I don't, and this that's is where what the road is, because <laughs> everybody faces their every, house towards everybody. the road. Well, that's true. <laughs> the The word is they faced the front door east, be and made it an upside down cross because they say that the second coming of Jesus Christ, he will come from the east, okay. and so they built it upside down and faced it east as a mockery. To the return of, of Jesus. Have you ever heard that? Oh, William Shatner didn't bring that shit, did he? <laughs> That's right, Will. Come on down here to Golden Mojo Entertainment. We'll talk this shit over. But, I mean, you never know. Maybe the person that built it just thought, this would be cool. You know, I just... I mean, he wanted the inside to be that way, and that's just how it came out. Who knows? It's a good question. I mean, who does... I mean, who really knows? Um, the inside of the house is constructed in five points. So the living room, actually, is it is it the windows that make the five points? Or is it just the walls of the room and the corners and where the, they all come the in? The corners of the joining rooms meet in the main living room to form a pentagon. A pentagon? A pentagon. No, try, got, try Pentag- again. Pentagram. <laughs> Pentagon, what the hell? Finish your... Damn, now we're on to the government <laughs> shit. It's the Pentagon. It's a Pentagon. Pent- <laughs> pentagram. It is a pentagram. Oh, my gosh. Pentagram. You're the best. You're the bestest. <laughs> um, yeah, so now they say that the on each of those uh, five different separate walls, there's actually... Um, symbols embedded into into the walls themselves as as part of of the pentagram and whatever they think that the place was built for okay now we discussed this a little bit and you know uh we're going to talk more about the history of the house here in a minute but let's talk about some of the just some of the quick theories on it so you know like i said they built this place, they faced it east as a big middle finger to when Jesus comes back. Because that's where they'll all be standing waiting for him to come out, you know, to come back. But some others say that the house was actually built to entrap spirits and hold them there, to hold demonic spirits there. Right, and that's um, the same way as the prison. They were saying that the prison that was built in that shape that was to keep the evil inside. Inside the walls. Right. Right. So that was why they did that was to, but there were, I mean, everybody has their own reasoning behind it. I mean, some of them were like, so that they, they would repent and, you know, all these kind of things for their sins. And that's why it was built that way. So there's many different reasonings behind why it was. There's, yeah, there's so many theories on what actually goes on in that place, but but I would think that, you know, trapping the evil spirits is probably why it would be haunted if that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, if you are if you built that and the cross the crossways is the, to bring them in and the pentagram and the symbols are all to keep them right there. Right. I mean, if that was the design of it, that would make perfectly good sense to me. Mm-hmm. And then and it's I, all- I flash back to 
I flash back to like Supernatural and how they always put the freaking pentagram on the ceiling so that the demons can walk into it and not realize not, it. Not be able to yeah. get back out. Yep. Yeah. And that makes total sense. It's insane. But um, it's also uh, built next, close to a river. Yes. Um, Actually, two where two rivers connect. Two rivers connect. And then it's also got a crossroads in front of it. Um, now, I, me personally, I wrote that down. It sits in a cross, uh, sets in a crossroads of Elm and Water Street. But if you look at the actual map, I don't know that I buy into that crossroads thing and right in the front. You would think that it would be kind of like right there, but it almost looks like the one road comes in at a kind of an angle. I mean, I mean, they're they're crossroads. I mean, we have crossroads everywhere. I mean. You know, you're not, I mean, I can drive down the road half a mile and, and get into a crossroad, but this one doesn't, I don't know that I would bring it into the ancient crossroads, you know, myth well, the, of I, Robert Johnson and sa- selling a soul to the devil at the crossroads. Because it just doesn't, it doesn't remind me of that. So I know that, I know it's been brought up in a lot of the research I, that I listened to or did with it, that it sets on a crossroad. But to look at it, I don't know that I buy into that. Well, if it's at the corner and you have a road going right, so east and one going east. Yeah, but they, I mean, they always say if you walk out the front door, you're going to be at this crossroad. Oh. And it doesn't, it's, it does, it doesn't yeah. set that way. Well, but, it wouldn't, I mean, yeah. Well, it could yeah. if it was facing east and the crossroad was to the east and the front door was actually facing the cross of the road. And you know, I don't know. I'm going to get into that too far. I'm going to sit here and argue with myself for an hour. So also, the house has been the site of two suicides, a hanging, three and three men poisoned. And at least like seven others who have actually tried to commit suicide in the house. So, what is that? Nine all to, nine altogether. You know, seven of them attempted it, but only two of them actually succeeded. And so, there's a lot of death with people who've lived in that house. And that's what I'd like to get into now. Would you like to get into some of the history of the house? Sure. All right. So, the house was built in 1890 by Annual Scott uh, Skies Scott. I want to say Skiles, and that's <laughs> it's it's annual Sykes. <laughs> wow, this is what happens when you have too many names in your brain. So it was built in 1890 by Annual. Uh, in 19 or in 1892. Now, once again, this is where my things get askew as far as my timeline. Jesse Sykes who I'm not sure if he actually lived there because Annual was his dad. Right. So I don't know if Jesse lived there because he was a little bit older because he was uh, married with stepkids. So was he living there with his dad and his mom or was did he live next door? I just having a I had a hard time trying to figure that out exactly. But uh, in in 1892, Jesse goes out to feed the hogs out back, and you know he he's feeding the hogs and he starts to walk away. Well, he has epilepsy, so he actually has an epileptic seizure while he's still in the hog pen. Okay, do you see where this is going? You know this story, right? I do know this story. Yeah. And you're and you're saying this is the man that that built the house. No, his dad Annual built the house. Oh, okay. From my understanding. So this is Yeah. This is This the is son. his son. Okay. So Jesse collapses because of the seizure and the family's in the house and they're like, "Man, he's been out there for a really long time, you know, it usually doesn't take this long." So they go back out to try to find him. And they find him in the hog pen actually being eaten by the hogs. And some say he was still alive and was still conscious why it was, you know, why it was happening. But, yeah, they say that it it was really, really a brutal thing to walk up on, that they'd already, like, taken a hand and, and ears and... And you know, it started working on his stomach, and you can, you know, you've heard the stories of mm-hmm. the hog pens over the years. 
but they got him out of there, brought him back in the house, and he actually died in the house. Like I said, my timeline is obscure because in 1932, Daniel's wife dies of uh, pneumonia in the house, and they were still living there. So my understanding is that Daniel stays in, you know, he's still living in the house after his wife passes away, and he starts to go mentally insane. And they say that he, at this point, was actually, the demons and stuff of the house were actually starting to weigh on him. And I do believe that he died 18 years later in the bathtub. And they say he was in the bathtub because that was the only safe place he found in the house to hide. But I guess he had all of his supplies in there. He took everything in there, shut the door, and would had never come out. It would he had just stayed in that bathroom. But he had died <coughs> in the actual bath bathtub. Insane, isn't it? It is. It is. I don't I mean I guess I don't know. Why why would you stay if something was affecting you like that? But maybe they didn't realize that's what was going on, you know? No. I don't either. Um, but it, it still falls down to, as Logan put it, ghosts are a poor people's problem because a lot of the time when people are getting haunted in houses, you would think, why don't you just leave? But if you got no money and you sank everything into that house that you have and you have no place to go, what else do you do? Correct, yeah. So, I mean, that may be the same the same thing. I don't know what life was like back in, let's see, 18 years after 1932 is what, um, 1950? Okay. Does that yeah. sound right? Mm-hmm. I don't know what life, you know, what life was like in 1950, but, wow, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Once again. <sighs> what doesn't make any sense? 1932, Annual's wife dies of pneumonia. 18 years later, Annual dies in the bathtub. But my research tells me that in the 40s and 50s, there was a woman who rented the house. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I think the stories have been, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different research done on this because the one I have says um, the same thing you said. Uh, a lot of recorded deaths through history, poisoning, hanging, suicides. In fact, the first recorded death was of the man who built the house, who was found in, in the, the bathtub. Pit. In the bathtub. Okay. No cause of death could be determined, is what this one says. Okay. So. So that would be annual. Annual died in the bathtub. But what year? But did they're that saying say? the man the first who recorded built death. the house. Right. So. Yeah, a lot of this information is very skewed. That's why that's why I made a disclaimer at the beginning because it's <laughs> it is very hard to get a timeline on the early stuff. Just right, you know. yeah, and yeah. So maybe it was supposed to be eighteen thirty-two. But then the house yeah, was built eighteen ninety. So anyway, so the there was a, let's just say in the fifties a woman rented the house. Um, she had uh, two kids. She was married, had two children, um, was living there for, I don't know exactly how long. It didn't really specify. But her husband mysteriously died. Okay. Okay. And as time progressed, her 10-year-old daughter just went missing. And they couldn't find her anywhere. And now as the stories go, you know, that they think maybe she started going insane, poisoned her husband, and basically murdered her daughter. Or, a more likely story, because her son hung himself in his bedroom. So they maybe they think that he killed a daughter, she was covering it up, he couldn't take the guilt. And hung himself in the house. Could be. We'll, we'll never know what happened. <laughs> well, 
when we get into the in, when we get into the Brenda Zimmerman part of the story, I, I, there's something they find in underneath the house that make me think that that might be more true. Well, yeah, I mean, they never, yeah, the daughter is missing. Well, did anybody investigate? I mean, <laughs> it was the fifties. I mean, it was the fifties. Here we are back to that fifties thing again. From seventy-eight to ninety-seven, <laughs> the house was owned by Sharon G. Uh, they said that she was uh, she, she lived there without really much incident. They, I think they said she knew the house was haunted, but she just, I mean, for 20 years, she just lived there and didn't let it bother. She'd be like kicking those ghosts to the curb, like, just get out. I ain't got time to mess with your I, shit. Like I said, I think it uh, probably affects people differently, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, same way, you know, Jen said last week that... Uh, you know, the people that moved in after her, we don't have anything, yeah, going have anything going on. Well, the next owner, after whoever, they never gave a name, but the gentleman that bought it from Sharon G. actually did commit suicide in the house. My understanding is he shot himself and fell into the yellow chair that is actually still in the house today. And you've seen pictures of it on in the video and stuff like that. It's still blood splattered, and the guy's hat is still sitting there on the back of the chair. But he was there for days before anybody found him. Yes, and I think if I remember correctly, didn't uh, the guy that bought it? They actually checked the chair, and it wasn't. It wasn't blood. It wasn't. Yeah. Was it like raspberry jam? I think it was just a stain. It was. A little water damage. Somebody coffee. Dumped. Whoever knows. You know what I mean. <laughs> Who knows? But well, let they, me tell you. From the pictures, it looks like blood. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2010, Brenda Zimmerman buys the house, and then in 2019, uh, Dave Spinks buys the house from Brenda. Which, if you watch um, the Unexplained, that he actually offers to buy the house from her in that video right yep 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 so let's get into the brenda zimmerman story because a lot of you know we talk about all the stuff going on and the and the theories that people are going crazy in this house and you know and killing each each other and hanging themselves and killing themselves when brenda buys the house she actually knows of all the stories of the house but she was like you know whatever once again she didn't believe in didn't it. Didn't believe it. You know, everybody's full of shit. So she buys the house. One of the first things that happens is she comes back into the house and there was a cross or something that had been on the wall. But now there's just a giant burn mark that they say looks like the head of a goat. Now, I looked at it. I didn't really see a head of a goat. But, you know, it, everybody's in for their own interpretation of what that yeah. means. Other things that happened along the way for uh, once they started the reno. And we all know how fucking rentals, renos go, people. If the house is haunted, don't renovate it because it's just going to make it worse. Big red flag. See that thing flying? If the house is haunted, you're going to piss off the ghost when you start renovating their place. But renos start, and they say that's when things really start to amp up. Right. Uh, like her son was in the living room working on some of the, it was on a ladder working on some of the ceiling stuff and some of the boards across the uh, other side of the room flew off and, and I don't know that they hit him, but it came close or whatever. Yeah. I think it struck him and injured him. Uh, saws like saws being thrown across the floor of the living room while they were working. Um, Brenda actually had six claw marks down her back uh and then we get into the maintenance yeah yeah but i only got well demons to have they might maybe (laughs) maybe he was using two hands all right maybe he was just maybe hey maybe he only had three fingers on each hand and he was using both hands how about that maybe the the guy that got ate by the hog and Maybe he had one finger left on the wall. Who knows? You never know. 
<laughs> so it was Jesse. It was Uncle Jesse that came in there. <laughs> He's lost fucking... <laughs> <laughs> he lost a thumb and and the thumb and three two fingers on the other hand. He's only got the four on this and two on that. Who knows? Oh my goodness, that's great. I didn't even actually think about that, but yeah, you uh, yeah. So she hires a maintenance man to come in and do some of the work, and while he's actually painting outside, uh, he's up on a ladder, and he gets pushed off the ladder. And they, he, he claims he heard a voice that says, get the fuck out of my house. He wasn't in the house. He was outside, but wasn't he? he was still working <laughs> on the house. Man, now we're just getting a little, now we're just getting a little. Uh, I, I have, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there was another one about the same handyman that uh, he was mowing the yard and she was inside and heard a, um, Heard a cry, and when she went out, he uh, he was crumpled against the wall of the house, unconscious. He got thrown off a lawnmower. He got thrown off the lawnmower, and uh, he couldn't remember what had happened. He like uh, he almost his spine was almost fractured, um, but uh, she said that you know you uh, I told you not to get close to the willow tree. Like he had hit some of the branches on the willow tree, and that's what she thought. Well, there's a story of, uh, of of three guys that that came over and were mocking the willow tree too. Did you hear this story? I did hear that one. And yes. and they didn't believe it, so they ripped a branch off and they left. And then they got into a horrific uh, car accident. Just what? Just a few miles down the road. Yeah. Yeah. The house is m- malicious. Uh, anyways, the same maintenance man goes under the house. I mean. You know, this guy's. Wouldn't you like, just give up? I mean, this guy's a glutton for punishment, is he what not? What did you say? He fell off the ladder and then got thrown off the lawnmower. Got thrown and off the lawnmower. And then he decides, okay, I'm going to come back. I'm better. <laughs> well, apparently, while he was under the crawl space, he might. He claims he might have gotten sexually assaulted. Really? He got diddled. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why? <laughs> but while he was under there. You know, the sexual assault, I don't know. It was something that was thrown out there. I thought I'd, I'd bring it up. But while he was under there, he finds an arm and an elbow of a small child. And he found a circle of stone. So let's revert back to the woman who was there in the 50s and the, and the 10-year-old yeah, the daughter, daughter that is was gone. Missing. Yep. Yeah. The, is that her arm? That is a question that I don't know why that wasn't answered along the way somewhere. Um, oh, Bill Shatner, you got something for me there, buddy? All the... The doctor quickly identified it as the inact humerus of an older child, long dead, so mm-hmm. it possibly, could possibly be. Of an older child. Would we it's consider a, 10 as I an older say, child? I would say, yes. Right um but uh, law enforcement was called out, but because the bone was over 50 years old, the police declined to investigate. Well, yeah, they're not, they're not going to waste their time. They don't, even, they don't even want to give up looking for missing people as it is to begin with. Why would they spend time looking at an arm bone or, right. um, of a small child? I, I think that everybody knew. Once you're dealing with that house, I think that everybody everybody knows that, so... Um, while they were pulling up the carpeting, they found the book. Mm-hmm. Now, what does your research say that the book was? Because I found a couple different things. Um, my the one I have says it was a grimoire. So, um, it's, what is a grimoire? Um, a grimoire is like somebody's spells and things that they've written down over the years. Um. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the strange book, book was a grimoire filled with hor- horrific images of brutality and dark incantations. Uh, they said it was no normal Wicca book and obviously contained the owner's deepest secrets. Um, but they don't know who it belonged to. It said, worse, that according to the inscription, it belonged to a previous resident. So. But they never said who it was. 
Uh, no, they never said who it was. It said, petrified about the witch's possible return. After burning the book, the occupants moved out. So this was just oh. some somebody that was in, it was probably in there for a little while. It for in, a minute. And... In the 50s, yes. So, right um, Yeah, so the story stayed in the family that had left and right. until the grandson of the woman who found it called uh, Dave and let him know. Gotcha. Once he... Okay. That, that was what mine said. I, I just got that it was uh, that it gave like a how to do seances and stuff like that. Right, and that's what a grimoire is. So right. a, a witch or Wicca or whatever would write down the spells that she came up with, and so. There you go. You watch Charmed. I love. Charmed. You know what a grimoire is. I you know <laughs> when you said it, I just. <laughs> When you said it, I just lost <laughs> my whole train of thought. And I'm like, <laughs> when I when you say grim, I think of the Grim Reaper. Yep. And that's what kind of threw me off. But that's okay because I get thrown off a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, the biggest story that comes from Brenda's era of actually being there was that she was having a family party. I guess family get together in the garage. And her three-year-old niece was was standing there, and she was staring up at the side of the house, at a window that was way up there. And they asked her that, that what what are you doing? And she goes, "Oh, I'm just waving at the little girl in the window." And of course, they looked, and they don't see anything. But and they kind of all kind of go on her on their way. But the little niece stays there to to kind of I don't know I guess play with the little girl in the window when they went back towards the garage the niece just starts screaming bloody murder and they all ran back over there and they said what happened and she said the little girl flew down and bit me in the face and they said she had what looked like a bite mark on the side of her face mm -hmm. I don't know and you guys want to go and do that kind of stuff and they Little bitches biting you. <laughs> I mean, that gives a whole new theory to the word ankle biter. It just, you know. It does. Like I said, I don't, you know, it's, I don't want anything physically to happen, but, you know, you to anybody, yeah. but, you, you know, just seeing see something. something, I don't, it's not that I'm not a believer, but I've never had an experience, so. Understandable. Understandable. You live you live with me. I've never had an experience either. I'm like garlic to ghosts, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just I've never never had an experience, even when I'm in the places that you're supposed to have experiences in. Yeah, and I think as as we get older I think it's probably more that we probably won't because we are so What's that? Closed-minded, off-set yeah, in our ways? I, yeah, set in our ways and, and not really looking at, you know, we're look, focused on what's straight ahead of us and getting to a certain point so you're not looking everywhere and seeing what's going on around you as much. Does it make sense? Kind of, yeah. Kind of a little bit. So Brenda ends up, she can't stand to even go in the house anymore because of all the things that happen. So in the unexplained Dave offers to buy it to her on the spot, and she seems all like, <gasps> but in my research that I found is, is that Brenda actually had reached out to him and asked him if he was interested in purchasing the house from her. Really? Yeah. So, you know, once again, is it TV magic? It's TV you know, magic. TV magic. But anyways, Dave ends up buying the, buying the house. And he starts bringing in investigation teams. Of course, after he's investigated two or three times, he has got some really cool footage of an apparition walking across. I can't think of the The camera was up and running. They forgot it was on, and they went back to get it. And like a few days later, they were just reviewing the footage. So it was just running in an empty, in the empty living room. So it was facing one of the corners down it was facing and you can see the apparition walk in what looks like just the other room or whatever mm -hmm. through some through some pillars or whatever i'd have to go back and show it to you again but 
it is a full figured apparition it reminds me a lot of your nurse that you saw the other day oh yeah that was amazing yeah that one that one was like yeah and i'm and it's so crazy because you know going back to like zach baggins when something happens like whoa what was that you know this oh well that's a voice and you know it said this but you don't hear this until they say that you know what i mean it's well, like put into your head we talked about this the other day when we were going through the evp that jen brought yeah, I, I said it almost sounded, I was like, was Jen with them? Because right. I could hear those women's voices, like one of them was whispering. That's right. what it sounded like to me. So I just, you know. Understandable. I, I just, I don't know. That just kind of but what we were upset saying... me that I just, I don't. I don't think those women are real, you know what I mean? I mean you think they might just, be a little fake, is what yeah, you're trying to say? But hey, hey, it's just my opinion. Hey, whatever works. That is that is an opinion to have. Um, so but what it, I was saying was is that it's the same as like these TikTok videos that, that have two words and they were like, whatever words you're looking at is what you're going to hear. hear. Yeah, so as soon as somebody puts that thought in your head, that's what you hear. Right. And I mean, there's sometimes when people get EVPs like, oh, yeah, that is exactly what they said. They don't even have to tell you what they heard. But yeah, that apparition and the way the team, when they saw it, because nobody was physically there, it was just a camera running and their pure excitement was you could tell this was real like they were literally saying this is the first time we ever caught anything like you know right they were ecstatic and screaming and it, it, you could tell it was real you right. know it wasn't something fake because they're they were just they were yeah they, they were, were scared they were enthusiastic they were yeah it was crazy so <laughs> why we how could you tell they were scared where there was a puddle <laughs> you know the medium girl she you could tell when oh, she was oh <laughs> yeah 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 the, the medium girl I, I don't remember what her name is but yeah i've seen her on several different things and she's very very face um active yes yeah all right so dave's got people coming in to do investigations um and you know it's interesting to go and watch some of those videos. If if you guys get a chance to watch it on Scare TV, if you want to, what was it like five bucks to rent or something? Yeah, like that. I didn't like his group that he brought in. No, I did not. There were too many of them, and they were just it yeah. was it was too active. There was too many people running around, and too many people questions and blah blah blah. But uh, they say that uh, after these investigations, like eight out of ten of the investigators who have been in this house have to have some sort of care given to them after they leave the house like either get sick or you know whatever else but right they're saying that going into this house is is not really a good thing to do <laughs> what is it asbestos or something yeah, <laughs> they, they, asbestos. The well they claim that attachment leaving yeah. willows weep yeah. attachment is actually a major concern so that's something to really kind of keep in keeping your thought process if you ever decide to go to Willow's Weep. Um, and you know, I brought this up to uh, to uh, Connor when you know when he was on. I asked if they did anything to cleanse, and you know they don't. But I would think that you would want to cleanse when you leave someplace like that. So I would think so. I mean, if you believe in that stuff, why wouldn't you believe in making sure you're not bringing anything back out with you? Right. Um, that's that's one make... of my biggest concerns if we were ever to go somewhere is the attachment value of bringing it back home with you. Right. And I, I'm i not saying that we ever will. I mean, it's not like, we have got to go do this. Right. You know, if we have the opportunity. Okay. So, listeners, we, we did take a vacation at the end of June. We went to southern Indiana. And as we were coming back, I made the comment of how close we were to Louisville when we were there. And I got in trouble because I didn't tell her how close we were to Waverly Hill. <laughs> <laughs> she was very upset with me. Instead of dragging me through the jungle and having to eat a turtle to survive, we could have went to Waverly Hills and just got the pants scared off of us. <laughs> I have a feeling, like I said, I would we would just be walking through an old building and I would be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and then yeah. we walk out and be like, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. You never know. So uh, Dave Spinks has actually written a book, and he has shot the video on Scare TV. There are several pieces on YouTube if you ever get a chance to go check them out. Um, you know, not a ton. Most of most everything he's kind of kept into that documentary on Willow's Weep. So if you get a chance, it's on there. If you want to see it, it was it was five bucks. It was a good it was a good research piece for me. I I enjoyed watching it. Like I said, the the whole investigation team was a little cluttered, but you know if you spend time actually researching some of these stories and you watch all these different investigations on all these different places. Yeah. You get a lot of that, a lot of that clutter. So many people. One, one thing going back to the house and in its design, watching, watching the documentary on it. I loved how the windows were cut out in the right. corners. I thought that was a brilliant idea. I'm like, whoever built this house had something going for them there you know besides it being an upside down uh, upside down cross that was amazing unless you're on the west side and then it's an uh, then it's a right side (laughs) up (laughs) cross but yes i mean that just i was just like yes i would definitely see the appeal of driving by and if this house was so going oh that's amazing you know Mm -hmm. so i don't know if you i don't know i don't i don't know either i i looked at i've looked at it several times i know you're you're showing the picture to the camera but um, but yeah, just I've the windows on the side. Several times, yeah, it, that's pretty amazing. But once again, those windows cut in are also part of that five points of the right. um, of the right. Pentagon. Give I mean, you that pentagram. Pentagram. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I want to say Pentagon, I'm going to say <laughs> pentagram. Yeah, yeah. We should go to the Pentagon. <laughs> pentagram. Oh, all right. That's what old age d- does to you people. <laughs> Wrong words come out of your mouth. So. Cayuga has a lot of Indian heritage in that area. The towns that are, surround Cayuga are really, really rich in Indian hist- history. Uh, there, are several of the towns actually have Indian burial grounds, which we have actually seen in person down in Mount. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which they're they're pretty cool. I don't know that you know they're like a main attraction to go look at, but they're kind of neat to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, there you go. There is pretty much the story of Willow's Weep, as I could put it together, <laughs> with the help of the rocker chick who brought a lot of great information. And uh, we, I, yeah, I hope you guys like that. I mean, it, it, I hope it was interesting and and entertaining. But yeah, it's at Cayuga. You can find it at uh, 5173 North Elm Street in Cayuga, Indiana. That's right. Moan is the most evil house in North America. I'd say in Indiana. At least, yeah. <laughs> but I'm know. sure there's probably some other people that probably say theirs is, theirs is more. Who knows? All I know is Jennifer, which we've talked a lot about her in right, this episode, right. has hooked me up with a paranormal investigator friend of hers. And uh, we're working out some details. I'm going to get him on. But he's actually been he here, has hasn't he? He's actually been to Willow's Weep. Which, so. yes, I would definitely like to meet him and get his perspective. Oh, it looks like the Rocker Chick's hanging out for another episode of Two Stop when we get Brad on. Yeah, because I think I had asked her if she'd ever heard of it because we were, mm-hmm. we had just like watched the thing and she's like, oh, yeah, my friend actually investigated. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, so uh, I've actually been uh, IMing with him a little bit, so we're going to get that uh, get that worked out and get him on the show. And, cool. And he will talk about, uh, hopefully he'll want to talk about Willow's Weep. He says he's got a lot of great, uh, great stories to tell, so I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, there you have it. Willow's Weep. Willow's Weep. What's next? I don't know. What are you doing next? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. But you know what October is? It's Dolltober. It's Dolltober. It's Dolltober. Are are you ready for Dolltober? I think that's actually my next story is is a doll story. I think by the time that I'm ready for my next one, I think it falls into Dolltober. Gotcha. So there you go. So now we're just going to go watch documentaries on dolls. No, I'm not a big fan of dolls. <laughs> Let me tell you, all I've done today is listen to podcasts about haunted dolls, oh. trying to pick one that I want to do. 
I don't think I can do. I don't think there's enough information to do a, a whole episode on one doll. So I think I'm going to have to pick some of the smaller dolls. You know, Did you find puppets? Because I think no, puppets I didn't are find freaking any scary. Puppets. Oh, come on. There's got to be haunted puppets out there. <laughs> Send us your haunted puppet stories. Send it to you. What are they called? They're not called puppets. What are those Marionettes. Things? Marionettes. But yeah. But yeah. I'm thinking of like the little, you know, stuffed animal <laughs> puppets. You're making me wrong here. I'm talking about the things that people, Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you never know. But, but yeah, marionettes. That's a, that's the a two things you don't trust on that they're that don't have strings and that's telephones and marionettes. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for hanging out with me here You're in the studio. Welcome. I I appreciate it. Thanks for doing some research and coming fully prepared. Look at her. She's all, yeah, I don't know if you can see her on. She's all smiling. She's got her little blue glasses on so she could read. So I could read. <laughs> she's still on her work clothes because I drug her out here right away. We got to get this done. But thank you. Thanks for doing this with me. No problem. And uh, you'll have to come back on and do a show with me and Alicia. That would be fun. You can do that. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Definitely when Brad's here, right? You're going to come and do that one? Oh, yeah. Or he's actually, I don't know if he'll be in the studio. It'll probably be a Zoom call like we've done before. Because he's still, he's like down in Indy, so it's kind of a drive for him. So I think we'll do a Zoom call, but yeah, it'll awesome. be exciting. All right, everybody, thank you for uh, listening to the United States of Paranormal. If you uh, want to go check out the rest of the Golden Mojo Entertainment, you can go check out The Call Guys. That's facebook.com slash The Call Guys. You can also check out Golden Image Podcast, facebook.com slash Golden Image Podcast. You can check out my new venture with uh, Chico and my buddy Phil called Indiana Chiefs Fans, which is I N Chiefs Fans Podcast at uh, Facebook.com or something like that. Facebook.com Indiana Chiefs Fans. I don't know. Check out. It's on our. It's on the show notes. I swear to God. <laughs> so what is that? And also the the Murderers. Always check out the Murderers. Ashley and Alicia always hanging out doing doing their true crime in the whole world they've covered it all from australia to indiana that's a lot of world right there it is it is a lot of lots and lots, lots of, of crime lots and oh, lots of crime lots of crime lots you of could murder. go on with that podcast for hundreds and hundreds of years. and never repeat the same story it's true it's very true all right, everybody, thank you for listening. And remember, uh, you know, darkness is not just a lack of light, but a lack of life. Ooh. And I'll see you on the other side. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, Follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal and Facebook, the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com.